We will start our focus on the state of the nation. We'll be going over to our Abuja studios where uh, Femi Fanikaide joins us. He's the former Minister of Aviation. Uh, morning and thank you for joining us today. We're grappling with a number of things in this country. And then uh, let's start with security. Uh, headlines today, all of us with another unfortunate scenario in uh, Chibok. Burno State. What's your impression about what's going on with security in this country? Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Blessed be the name of the Most High God, the God whose I am and the God whom I serve. Blessed be his holy name this morning. Um, and may he guide me as I speak and protect me from the arrows of the enemy. And may he cause me to speak truth. Let me, let me start by commiserating with those that lost uh, the families of the people that lost their lives over the last few days. Um, but let me also say that it's very clear to me that we are a troubled nation and a lot of things are happening which we need to look at very carefully and we need to sit up and recognize what is really going on. Just a few days ago, um, we had people killed in Bauchi. A few days before then, we had 200 people killed in southern Kaduna. Yesterday, we had 53 people that went to church, and um, the church was locked up, and the communities were attacked by Boko Haram, and then the church was burned to the ground together with a number of houses. Um, it's very clear to me when you look at all these things that, it's, that Nigeria is a nation that is at war, and uh, we need to be able to do something about this and recognize the fact that when we are at war, you don't start fighting the government of the day. What you do is you try to join forces with all the relevant individuals to fight the insurgency, fight the militants, and move the country forward. And that's where I think we are. We are at war. We're a nation at war. And this war is not between Christians and Muslims. It's between those that believe in an Islamic fundamentalist state or the creation of it, and Islamic fundamentalists on the one hand, against the rest of us. That is Christians and Muslims together and everybody else. And we need to recognize that. And this war is being fought in Iraq. It's being fought in Afghanistan. It's being fought in Pakistan. It's being fought throughout the Middle East and Syria today. And in those countries, it is the Muslims themselves, the moderate secularist Muslims, that are fighting the Islamic fundamentalists with vigor and with strength and are holding them back. And I think it's important that we need to recognize this in this country, that every right-thinking person, whether you're a Muslim or a Christian, you need to join hands and fight the Al-Qaeda elements, the Taliban elements, and the Islamic fundamentalists, and try to ensure that they do not make the necessary gains that they've been making in the last few years. I'll also add this, that if you look at what has happened in Iraq, the advances of ISIS, they have managed to take over most of the country. They're now on their way to Baghdad, the, state, the, the nation's capital. If we are not careful, if we do not take this matter seriously, if we don't begin to understand the gravity of the situation that we're facing in this country, you may well find that sooner or later you will have such advances being made on Abuja by the Islamic fundamentalists and by Boko Haram. And so that's, that's where I think we are. We, we also need to understand this. The Boko Haram are beasts. They are people um, that you need to understand to be able to fight them, to be able to overcome them. Their whole mindset is simply one thing. That is to establish an Islamic fundamentalist state or to say that, look, we are not prepared to function or to live in a country that is ruled by a Christian or a moderate Muslim. That is their whole philosophy. That's their thinking. That once you establish that and you accept the fact that that is their philosophy and thinking, you will understand, you will accept the fact that there's no basis of negotiation or understanding with them. Nobody should stick their hands out, hand of friendship to them. The only way to take them on is to fight them join forces and fight them and rid our land of them. And that's, I think, you know, where we are today. As far as they're concerned, they will bomb this country into kingdom come until they have one of their own running the country from the center or until they establish an Islamic fundamentalist state. And when you look at all this, you now say, well, what's the alternative? It's either we accept that we should just continue like this and blood is being shed every day, or we decide to join forces with relevant you know, authorities and so on and so forth and fight them. Because there is no alternative. The, the APC, which is the alternative, is a party that, as far as I'm concerned, is tainted 
uh, with a Boko Haram brush. And I'll come to that later. Um, so I believe that we need to join forces. We need to come together as Christians and Muslims. We need to support the government. And we need to fight this insurgency and ensure that they do not achieve their obje objectives. Okay, let There's let one more thing I'll say just before we move on. People don't fully appreciate the level of depravity of these uh, beasts. Uh, people ask, well, if you say they're against the Christian leadership, then why is it that they're bombing Muslims? Well, I'll refer you to a passage in the Bible, uh, and I'm sure you read the Bible, those of you that are Christians, in which uh, there was an individual, there was a king, who presented his army before the army of Israel. There was going to be a battle. And the king of this pagan nation brought his first son, his first son, and he slit his throat and sacrificed him in front of the armies of Israel and in front of his own army. This was a depraved man. And the consequence of that was that the army of Israel and the king of Israel said, look, we can't fight these people. They're just so depraved. We have to go away. And they left them. That is the nature of those that are behind Boko Haram and that are supporting Boko Haram. They will kill their own Muslim brothers and sisters. They will kill Christians. They will kill anybody to achieve their objectives and to have their way. So don't be surprised by what we're saying. I said wow. this would happen many years ago, about three years ago, unless Just we took a firm moment, hand. Here, and it's happening yes. before our very eyes. Thank can you. you. Can you get me? Uh, allow us to establish something you know, yes. here, because uh, you have uh, kept on saying these people, it would seem as if you have a clue right. as to those behind uh, Boko Haram. Do you have any idea of uh, those behind Boko Haram? Well, what I'll tell you is this. It's, 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 it's very, very obvious um, that Boko Haram not only has international support, Al-Qaeda, and so on and so forth, but it is also obvious that Boko Haram has a lot of people within this country who um, have some level of sympathy for them. And, and, and there's no running away from that. I mean, there are some people in this country that believe that it suits their purpose for Boko Haram to kill people in order to discredit the government in order to destabilize the country and in order to bring the government down. And, and, you know, what we need to understand is that each time a bomb goes off anywhere, some people actually rejoice. And as far as I'm concerned, those people that rejoice simply because they feel, well, this is evidence of the fact that the government is not doing its job, those people are just as culpable as the people that actually put those bombs there and cause them to detonate and that go out and slit the throats of children and abduct people. And, you know, I, 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 I should go a little bit further to tell you that I said earlier that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the main opposition party is not an alternative, um, simply because some of them, not all, but some of them, appear to have sympathies uh, with elements in, 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 in Boko Haram. Do you and have I, can, any I, can, proof? I can go do further you, on that you, if you want uh, me to. Uh, uh, Chief uh, Fanny Kaida, do you have any proof to that? Because there's uh, a grave allegation on the political party or some of their members. I will, I will, do I will, you have sure. uh, any proof? proof as to what you have just said. Sure, I will. Yes, yeah, sorry, we're, we're, we're breaking a bit, yeah. No, I wanted to find out if you have proof when you say uh, some members of uh, the APC let were... Me, uh, let me go through that. Maybe members, or in your words, painted with the same brush of Boko Haram. Yeah. Let me, let me go through that, if I may. Some of, the, some of the evidence. I won't say everything here, but I'll certainly say some things here, if that's, if that's okay by you. Go ahead. Um, first of all, no. Go ahead. Are you with me? Or yeah. Okay. First of all, in 2011, we have to remember that um, elements within the opposition actually came out and said that if the presidency did not return to the north, that um, they, certain people would make this country ungovernable. That was in 2011. Now, three or four years later, three years later from that, we've seen evidence of that. We've seen that unfolding in this country. There's an attempt to make the country ungovernable. Hundreds of our citizens are being killed every day. And that, for me, is uh, some level, uh, gives you some level of insight about what's really going on here. Secondly, I want us to look at the comments of some of the leading members of the opposition over the last couple of years. I'll, I'll be very specific. You look at the comments of somebody like General Buhari, who was once head of state in this country. Just last year, he said that Boko Haram should be granted amnesty, that Boko Haram should be treated with kid gloves, that Boko Haram should be treated in the same way as the Niger Delta militants, that is to say they should be sent abroad, given money, paid a monthly salary, and so on and so forth, and that they should not be killed. Um, that is very interesting to me because 
I would have thought that after they've killed almost 15,000 of our citizens, at that point in time, this is not the sort of thing anybody of that stature ought to be saying. He didn't stop there, and I'll go further. In 2001, well before the insurgency started, the same gentleman said that um, in this country, in Nigeria, that um, he would spread Sharia, which is one of the cardinal principles of the Boko Haram philosophy, the spread of Islamic Sharia. He would spread it throughout the country. That was his stated objective as far back at that time. It tallies with the objectives of Boko Haram. Again, he said in 2001 that Muslims should vote only for those that would protect their interest. He said that even as far back as that time. This calls to question a number of issues as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Again, in 2001, he said that why should Christians be bothered when Muslims chop off their limbs? That after all, it's an all-Muslim affair. And of course, finally, he said that Nigerians and Muslims should only vote for people that will protect their own interests. Now, these issues give cause for concern. I'll go a step further. If you look at the activities and utterances of some of the senators uh, in the opposition in Borno State and indeed the Northeast, I'll, I can mention Senator Ndome. He has some very serious issues that he has to, uh, you know, that he has to clarify.